Warren Buffett is here. As you know, he is perhaps the world's most respected investor. He is also chairman and CEO of Berkshire Hathaway. He has been on this program many times. I last spoke with him over a year ago at the peak of the worst economic crisis since the Great Depression. At that time, he said that America had been struck by an economic Pearl Harbor. But much has changed since then, and he's here to tell us how he views a global and American economy in recovery. His own company reflects the progress made in recent months. Last week, Berkshire Hathaway struck a $26 billion deal to buy all of Burlington Northern Santa Fe Railroad, the largest acquisition in company history. He called the deal an all-in wager on the American economy. He's in New York for a town hall event that he held with Bill Gates at Columbia University yesterday. He graciously agreed to stay over in New York an extra night, and I am pleased to have a good friend of this program and a good friend of mine back at this table. Welcome. Thank you, Charlie. I'm pleased to be here. It's great to see you. Uh, it has been, certainly from the middle of 2008, to the middle of 2009, one incredible year. One incredible year. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. One to a lifetime, I hope. <laughs> but yes. Tell me about it for you. Well, it, it, was, it really was an extraordinary time in this country. We came closer to a financial meltdown than, than uh, certainly any time I've ever seen. And probably in certain respects, even there was even more panic than the, the Great Depression because it came on so fast and so unexpected. And, and, uh, and the the whole country wanted to deleverage uh, corporations, individuals, and fortunately, we had a government that responded. And it was, you know, it was when we talked last that it, it, it was a little question in, uh, of whether Congress would respond like they should. They'd, they'd, they'd they finally, did. They finally did, and I, 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 I felt they would in the end. I mean, in the in the end, they come together for things that are this vital to the country. But, but we had the right people in in, in Washington. If, if if we'd had a group that had. Uh, behave like a deer in the headlights, uh, uh, that deer would have gotten run over. Yeah. So Paulson and Bernanke and Geithner were the right people at the right time, and you don't know what might have happened if others had been in those positions of power. No, they're, they're, I can think of others, I'm not going to name them, but I can think of others <laughs> where, where the ending would have, would have been with us in the abyss rather than just peering down into it. Mm -hmm. uh, you made some investments during that period? Right. General Electric? Goldman Sachs, Goldman Sachs. Uh, but you just pulled out the big elephant gun. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, yeah, we, we may have used most of our powder. In that well, one you, said, <laughs> you said, I stretched to the last nickel for this one. Yeah. Why did you do it? Well, I, I, I felt it was an opportunity to buy a, a business that, that is, is going to be around for 100 or 200 years. It's, it's, that's interwoven with the American economy in a way that if the American economy prospers, the, the business will prosper. It's, it, 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 it is the most efficient way of moving uh, goods in the country. It's the most uh, environmentally friendly way of moving goods, and both those things are going to be very important. But the biggest thing is the United States is going to, going to do well. I mean, uh, we can't move the railroad to China or India. <laughs> we haven't figured out how to do that. So, so it, it, you know, it's a little like the rivers of that song about New York. We have to make it here or we can't make it anywhere. You know? Frank Sinatra. And, yeah, and, 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 you know, it, but it does move 400 and it moves a ton of, of goods 470 miles on one gallon of diesel. It replaces, a, a train replaces 280 trucks on the road. And it, it, it emits far less into the atmosphere that's damaging than, than, than trucking. And, and it moves 40%. I mean, what I'm talking about, the whole rail yeah, industry, right, right. it moves 40% of the goods plus. And, in the and you have new port of entries like Houston that will bring in a oh, lot of sure. goods through, and, through the and, Panama Canal. And, and we're going to have more people in this country, and they're going to be using more goods over time. And and sure, there's a bad year from time to time. And in the next 100 years, there'll probably be 15 bad years. But, but, and I don't know what order they'll appear. But I also know the railroads will be essential to the country. Now, when you called Charlie Munger and said, I'm thinking about this, did, did he say, right on Warren? Or did he say, how about this? And well, and if, if, Charlie, if Charlie said, right on Warren, I figured I had the wrong number. No, I mean, that, that would be the wrong number. It's not the likely response. That might response. be my wife or my, you know. But, but Charlie, no, Charlie, Charlie, Charlie gave a kind of a low-level grumble. And, and, and <laughs> that is that is real endorsement from Charlie. <laughs> but I mean, he also pointed out it is said that you know there was uh, this was a regulated industry. Sure, this was an industry that was capital intensive. Very capital. This was an industry. Uh, uh, you, you spend money. That was in this, unionized. It was unionized. You spend money in this business regularly every day. You're spending a lot of money repair track or mm. you know add rolling stock, whatever it may be. So it's capital intensive, and and. Uh, and it is it is regulated, and it will continue to be regulated. It will continue to be capital intensive. I think that what the service provided by railroads is so important uh, in in many ways. I mean, it 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 
it's the right way to move goods around the country to the extent that you can do it. And, and it's far, far more attractive in terms of uh, global warming than, than, than uh, using trucks, for example. So it will be here. And if we get a, a reasonable return on the added capital investment, because it'll take added capital mm. investment, uh, we'll do okay. And reasonable return's good enough? Reasonable return's good enough, uh, Charlie. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, you know... Fifty years ago, I was looking for spectacular returns, <laughs> yes, but I, I can't. I can't find. I can't get them. You yeah, know, I mean, right, we, right. we have we have eight or ten billion dollars to invest every year, and we're in the utility business, and it's the same thing there. I mean, when we build electric generation or something of the sort, we shouldn't expect a spectacular return. We're building things that are essential to society, and and people need our services. They really don't have any choice in the in the case of the electric utilities, for example, and sometimes in case of rail. And and we, we should get a decent return on that. I mean, it's enough to encourage us to keep putting money into the business, but we're not entitled to spectacular returns. Uh, you carry coal. Well, that's a, that's a big one in terms of tonnage, yeah. yeah. Very and, big. and if, in fact, we wean ourselves off coal, is that a big problem? Well, we will wean ourselves off coal over time, but we, we can't change 40% of electric generation that goes that comes from coal, we can't change that next week or next month or next year, but we will reduce it over time, and we should reduce it then over time. And you can time. add other things to uh, carry, and changes will no, be... There will, there will be more grain to move, and there will be more of all kinds of chemicals or whatever it may be. Uh, there, there will be more things moving around this country 10 or 20 or 30 years from now. <laughs> Knowing your idea about moats, uh, is it a pleasing idea that no one is likely to get into the railroad business? Well, if, from a if they wanted, if they wanted to reproduce uh, the Burlington Northern Santa Fe, you know, it might take a hundred billion dollars or so. And that, you know, and hundred have, billion years. They, yeah, they'd have to be a real sport. Yeah. <laughs> and they also modernize today, are they not? I mean, oh, they, enormously, yeah. enormously. The 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 railroads take a railroad like BNSF. They're they're moving yeah. far more ton uh, ton miles uh, of, of product. Uh, uh, with with less less in the way of people, uh, less in the way of fuel, uh, railroads have become far more efficient over the years. There were there were a million and a half people employed in the rail industry after World War II. Now there are several, about less than two hundred thousand in the United States, and they're moving far more goods. So it's really become efficient. You watch those hundred and thirty unit trains double stacked. You had other railroad companies in your portfolio, right? You're selling them? Uh, I've already sold them. Yeah, I've done that just to facilitate the transaction. I think I think they're good investments, but I uh, I would have held them if if this hadn't happened. Uh, when you look at the future, there is also the argument made uh, that that this is something that goes with your philosophy today: get out of cash and get into assets, because we don't know what's going to happen to the dollar. Well. Cash is always a bad investment. Uh, <laughs> yes. I mean, when people said cash is king a year ago, I mean, that's crazy. I mean, cash wasn't producing anything, and it was sure to go down in value over time. And then you always want to be sure you have enough. I mean, <laughs> it's like, like oxygen. You want to be sure it's around, you know, but you don't need to have, you don't need to have excessive amounts of it around. And cash, uh, we will always have enough cash yeah. around. But any time we have surplus cash around, I'm unhappy. I mean, I would much rather have good businesses than cash. And, and uh, we found a chance in the last year, thereabouts, to mm -hmm. deploy. We, we came in with something over forty billion in cash, right. and we've got about twenty billion now. And we've had some earnings, so we we put a lot of cash to work. And I like that. No, I'd much rather own a good business uh, than have cash. Uh, and it is a hedge against the dollar. Well, you can say all assets are a hedge against okay. the, the dollar. Right. I mean, but. The, all you know is that the dollar is going to be worth less 10, 20, 30 years from now. I say worth less, not right. worthless. Right. <laughs> you want to watch that. <laughs> but it, it will be, you know, and that's, that's true of almost every currency that I can think of. Uh, the question is how much uh, it depreciates in value. But cash cash is not a place to uh, at that. Now, why is that? Mind. Well, that because the dollar it, is going to be worth less. Because we'll. we'll, we'll Print more of them in relation to the amount of goods that are moving. Uh, you know, if, if we if we dropped if we dropped a million dollars of cash into every household in the United States today, everybody would feel very good, except the people that invested in things that were denominated in dollars. And, you <laughs> exactly. Know, yeah, exactly. Yeah, 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 there will be no tendency uh, toward deflation in, in in this country over time, or or in virtually any a country. tendency toward inflation. Absolutely. Okay. In all the conversations we've had, I never thought that I would sit with you and we would talk about a 50 to 1 split. <laughs> yeah, right. 
<laughs> of the class. Right, stop. Right. I mean, this had to be a hard one or not. Yeah, I think I had a lobotomy one night and I didn't know about it. <laughs> now, it, 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 is, it is not, it's not natural for me, but, but it, it was needed to facilitate the small shareholders of BNSF getting the same deal. Right.